Fred, FR5ED, Silent 5, here with a beer review. This is another offering from Rev Brewing, R-E-V-E, -E, I think it's pronounced Rev, in Atlantic Beach, Florida, which is up in the Jacksonville area. Uh, again, this is a, a gift from my friend Collins, and this is another one in the Down the Rabbit Hole series. Um, I just recently reviewed a an Imperial Stout from there, 10.5%. They're a bourbon, or it was a barrel-aged stout, some some whiskey, and it was uh, volume 8, I believe, of that. And this is called Some Bunny Is One, and it's a double vanilla birthday stout. I don't believe a birthday stout is an official BJCP uh, or, or any brewing organization's <laughs> guidelines. But uh, it's a double vanilla stout, so you know it's a stout. It's a double stout because it weighs in at a hefty 12.1 percent. Yes, so that's uh, one to you know be very wary of the consumption rate and volume thereof. Um, anyway, so um, we're going to try this. This is it's it's uh, the description was very. It's not reviewed anywhere that I could find besides just a few on Untapped. Up, rated up in the fours out of five, um, you know, of the few that had reviewed it. Uh, but it does say that it's got vanilla, chocolate, lactose. Again, I really should keep napkins in here. Pardon. Is there a napkin in here? No. I'm going to check another drawer. Is there a napkin in here? No. All right, so let's pour this. Oh, dark, deep, dark, and thick. Are we surprised? Not for a double stout, an imperial stout. All right, that is, I see no light through this. And again, that's a, a studio, a diffuse studio light. And I'm just seeing a silhouette. I'm not seeing a hint of light coming through that. Uh, it was not a vigorous pour. Did not get much of a head there. But it, if there were one, it would be tan, as we can see. Swish it around a little. Interesting. Not much lacing. So, who knows? I don't know the grain bill. I don't know the hops. There was nothing I could uh, ascertain regarding that. And there's nothing really on the bottle. So, going in blind, so to speak, we know it's a double stout. We know it's 12.1%. It's, it's and we can see that it's thick and dark. So that's what we have objectively. Let's, let's go at it and get the uh, subjective experience. The aroma, hmm. Very intense dark chocolate, almost a bitter, very bittersweet dark chocolate aroma, coupled with, I don't know if this is the lactose, if that imparts any aroma at all, but even though it's a bittersweet dark chocolate aroma, along with it is the hint of, of sweetness. This is, this is without tasting it. There is definite vanilla. Well, since it's called a double vanilla birthday stout, Sometimes the vanilla can be overpowered by the chocolate and the dark roast. Um, but this is coming out noticeably. Interestingly, I, I don't get the alcohol. Sometimes like the 10.5% when I had the other day, you could smell the alcohol. You, you got that little bit of a burn or uh, essence in your sinuses. I'm not getting that from this. That worries me. <laughs> okay. Wow. That was a cleansing sip. Oh, wow. Okay, I'll take another sip. This is one of the most intense flavor and mouthfeel experiences. The aroma, the aroma hints at what's to come. Nothing prepares you for what happens when you take a sip. Wow, those are intense flavors. 
I'm, I'm going to have to sip this several times to make sure I don't miss anything, first of all. Before the flavors, it is a heavy mouthfeel. Thick coating mouthfeel. It is very sweet. Some would say cloying. Sweeter than anything I've had recently. So I'm guessing lactose, you know, has been used. Very much coffee flavor in there. The vanilla is all, all through it. Chocolate. Definitely dark chocolate. But you don't really get the bitter sweet because there's so much sweetness to this. And it's intense. Did I mention everything about this is intense? It is in your face. I mean, yeah, it's in your mouth, so it's in your face. But I mean, it's in your face. And I haven't even let it really warm up yet. This is only going to get more intense over time. That's a, that's a pint there, I believe. Yeah, it's 16 ounces. So really, I should let this warm up a bit. And then try it again. I mean, oh, there's, there's definitely oak in there. I just got an aftertaste of charred oak almost. I don't think it's barrel aged. Doesn't say anything about that. Of course, the bottle's not real informative. Wow. This is something that you definitely would sip and sip slower than I'm sipping it. I'm taking very, well, me personally, if I were just going to sit down to enjoy this privately instead of publicly, um, I would not be sipping it so heartily. Lots of adjectives, adverbs, adverbs there. Okay. Maybe that brought it up a degree or two, just passing along some body heat to it. Let's give it another sip and see what's changed. First of all, aromas are a little more prevalent because when you heat it up, it's going to uh, let more of the aromas rise up, more of the volatiles. Yeah, and I think what benefited the most from that was the vanilla. I'm getting actually more vanilla coming off of it. Mm. Smells great. And again, if you could see the light that's trying to go through the edge of it, it doesn't. This is, you talk about crankcase oil. That's the appearance. Mm. Oh, letting it warm up is critical. Those first several sips I had, I was getting, you know, plenty of, of, of flavor coming through. The sweetness hasn't changed. The mouthfeel really hasn't changed. But just that little bit of warming up, the flavors are melding together more, becoming, um, I don't want to say mellower, the flavors themselves. I'm just, I just mean they kind of blend better. Instead of being isolated so much, they're, they're really... They're really blending. Mm. Oh, this might even be best at room temperature. It's definitely come up, I'm going to guess, 10 degrees since I opened it because I've been, it's been sitting, you know, while I've been talking and now I've been really imparting some, some heat to it. This is, this is becoming more and more. Well, you know, once your mouth gets coated with whatever it is you're drinking, after about three sips, you're going to acc acclimate and settle in to whatever the flavors are, and either you're going to like it or not. Um, and maybe it's going to become more or less enjoyable over time as, it, as your mouth gets coated and it warms up. This is becoming more and more um, relaxed and um, enjoyable. It really is. It's not, again, I don't reach for sweet milk stouts. I don't reach for, you know, the sugary flavored fruity things. And yet my, my friend Collins has been stretching my, my horizons of uh, things to try and, and give a chance that I would not reach for and give a chance usually. Yeah, those aromas, the, the, 
the vanilla, it's almost like vanilla with oak now. Like a charred oak with vanilla, the dark chocolate, the roasted malt, the um, coffee. Oh, I almost swear. No, I, I don't quite get, you know, bourbon like you would from a bourbon barrel aged stout. Uh, like the last one. This one, this one is just sweet, heavy, everything about it. It's almost like minus the bourbon. <laughs> but oh boy. Mmm. Yep, the more that warms up, the more enjoyable it is. And again, it's quite sweet and it's not something I would normally reach for. Go figure. So, this is one of the Down the Rabbit Hole series from Rev Brewing in, in Atlantic Beach, Florida. It's called Some Bunny is One. I think it's a reference to the first year anniversary of this particular one, perhaps. Uh, it's a double vanilla birthday stout. That's the beer. This is Fred, FR5ED, over and out.